Hello there everybody and welcome back to my F122 career mode. We're now at Singapore for the Singapore Grand Prix. If you haven't seen the last one from Monza, go back and check that one out before you check this out. This is your last chance to do so before spoilers. It was a strong result in Monza with some good points and now we're hoping to follow that up here. But what's not a good start to following up a result is Sebastian Vettel in the wall there in the first part of qualifying so that's unfortunate for him pretty much straight off the bat he finds himself in the wall as we're now trying to graduate from q1 that's a lot of curve there but yeah we're off the back of a strong result in mons and we managed to finish in p8 in the end and grab four points for the team which is a good result but now we're going to do better here with any luck the singapore grand prix then it's a bit of an endurance test and it really does test your resolve because it, it just feels like it goes on forever, doesn't it? Anyway, we're now doing our first qualifying lap. A little bit of a corner cut there. Didn't really gain too much, though. And in the end, the lap time is a 1.41.5, which is okay, I guess. But in order to get through, we need to do better. So we're now on our second lap and we've found okay, quite a few tenths. And... Our engineer, for some reason, is going on about fuel while I'm in the middle of a hot lap. I'm not quite sure why, but okay, mate. <laughs> okay, I needed to know that. Anyway, our second lap doesn't really improve our position. And, well, we've got another driver out of qualifying. That is the McLaren, who's just found the wall. But the good news is we managed to do another lap, and it was good enough for P12, which means we have a place in q2 and for us that is a big deal because we did we have struggled quite a bit this season to get out of q1 so it's nice to be in q2 once again i'm about to set my lap though and yeah bit of a mistake going straight on there but we can recover that no problemo but when it comes to actually doing my lap that same corner bites again and unfortunately that will be us out of qualifying but we, I feel like we've got decent pace here, you know, and I feel like we have got pace to fight for the points. So I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic about this race. I'm cautiously optimistic that come, come the race, we can, we can do well. Here we go then, it's Formula One in Marina Bay once again, and welcome to all of you at home who join us today for this fascinating race around the baking hot but beautiful streets of Singapore. We're here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit today, located in the heart of Singapore. The circuit consists of the 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right. It's a track that's incredibly technical, so don't expect to see the drivers taking too much of it at full throttle. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Norris, Verstappen, Sergio Perez and Bottas. Fernando Alonso, Ocon, Russell, they've taken a grid penalty and Lance Stroll. Latifi, Sainz, Joker and Gasly. Vettel, Joe, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Daniel Ricciardo and Alex Albon. Liam Lawson, they've taken a grid penalty. Magnussen, Mick Schumacher and Yuki Tsunoda. Now it lights out just moments away. It's time to go down to the track. With me today, of course, is Natalie Pinkham. Why don't we get things rolling by talking about George Russell? As ever, the threat of unreliability is never far away, and indeed, they'll be starting out of position today due to power unit component changes. It's going to be a difficult task to move forward from there. But on the bright side, at least those fresh components can help them maintain the power they need to come through the pack. I expect to see them take a much more aggressive approach today to make up for that compromised start. The formation lap gets underway then, and it's going to be interesting today to see how the dry conditions could affect the lifespan of the tyres. As the 
cars make their way back to the starting grid to form up and get ready for lights out. Let's hope the race ahead today is a thrilling one. It will go down as a memorable Grand Prix in the history books. Right then, getting ready to park up on the grid for what is Formula One's, well, one of Formula One's biggest endurance tests. First you have the Monaco Grand Prix, which we didn't make it to the end of. But now we have the Singapore Grand Prix. 31 laps around this tight, grueling circuit. Where can we end up? We are starting P13. I'm thinking we can be towards the back end of the points. I'm hoping we can gain a few positions. We've already gained a couple courtesy of some energy engine penalties. And it's lights out and away we go then. And it's a decent start for us. Is Gasly going to try and get alongside? Yes, he is. And he's away like a rocket ship. But we're going to switch back down the inside and gain a position on him. We're trying to gain a position on Gotifi as well. But Nicholas holding the outside line. He's, well, we managed to get past him because he just backed completely out of that one. I really thought he'd try and hold that one. But he didn't. And we're up to P12. We're up in position already. And I think Latifi's now got the attention of Pierre Gasly right behind him. So it's a decent start. We have gained a position. We don't want to let these guys get too far ahead of us. Otherwise, we will be struggling. In fact, Sainz is backed up down there. So we're going to have a look up the inside. And in a corner that doesn't usually see overtaking, are we going to get it done? We're now holding out around the outside. We're side by side with Carlos Sainz. I'm trying to squeeze him to the inside there. I've given him space, gone round the outside. Break late, gone a bit wide, but we've still held the position. Carlos backing out of that one quite sensibly. As we now come to the end of the first lap, Sainz wants revenge, but, well, I've shut the door on him there. He is not getting through easily. What that's done is attract the attention of Gotifi, though, who's having a look down the inside of Sainz. Sainz locks up. And the absolute goat has gained a position on Carlos Sainz there. Now, this was something I had to do back when this game first came out. Because of the freezing glitch we had, this predated, this recording predated, I should say, any patch that came out for the game. So, that's why I was doing a mid-session save there. I do apologise for the bad edit. It shouldn't have made the video, but whatever. You're just seeing the struggles of what I had to do early in this career mode. Right, we're now up the back of Esteban Ocon, challenging him for P10. And by lap three, we are close enough to have a go into my new favourite overtaking spot, down the inside, and that is us in the points. Nice move. So good, good progress being made, but we need to keep this up. Oh, GG for that tree there, blocking the view of the overtake. I was going to get a nice little replay there, but that didn't happen. Right, now Bottas and Stroll are busying themselves with each other. Stroll has got some good pace round here, because he has been all over Bottas all race. Bottas on those soft tyres, and they don't appear to be working for him. And now Bottas is going to be vulnerable to us, but we've got Ocon right behind us and Gotifi also wanting to get involved so there's a five-way scrap going on here but i'm wanting to try and clear it and let these guys scrap it out amongst themselves right down the inside of Bottas, who i feel like we caught napping a bit there because that dive bomb shouldn't have happened but Bottas just not seeing that coming at all and we've got a random safety car now i went back to try and figure out why this was I had to look at the footage, but it was all clear, so Strategy complete. I don't know if what caused that or why, but we have the safety car, so I've decided to pit in for hard tyres, and we have Mick Schumacher pulling out of the race, so I don't know if he had an issue. Sorry, that's I think that's Kevin Magnussen pulling out of the race, I beg your pardon, but the Haas must have had some kind of issue slowing him down. And maybe that's what caused the safety car. Who knows at this point. Right. Green flag racing is enabled once again. And we are right behind Bottas. On our hard tyres though. Bottas on mediums. And Ricardo is having a look straight away. Straight away I'm shutting that down. And it appears that the front runners haven't taken on the hard tyres yet. So we might be able to take a bit of a cheeky advantage here. 
this race could come to us later and we could be on for quite a good result. But for now, we need to make sure we don't lose too much time fighting the likes of Ricardo. First up is Bottas, who's going to be really backed up here. And for the second time in this race, we've lunged on Bottas down the inside of that corner. Bottas rise to it this time, and ooh, he came right across on me there. Bottas wise to that overtake and just letting me know that that isn't going to happen again. Ricardo ha having another look, but that's not happening. Right, now on Bottas down the inside here and Bottas just jumps out of the way because he sees me coming. And I think that was an attempt to avoid hitting him, turning into a good overtake there because I broke so late. So I think... It was less an overtake attempt and more a I do not want to hit him attempt, but it turned into an overtake. Whatever, we've gained the position. Next up is Yuki Tsunoda in P17, and this is going to be down the inside. How are we going to get it stopped? Yes, we do. And that is the position. Next up is Mick Schumacher, who is fighting Liam Lawson, our teammate, who is in 15th. And this is Max Verstappen trying to get down, sorry, Sergio Perez. Trying to get down the inside of Gotifi and making it stick. So Sergio Perez making a crucial move on Latifi. Meanwhile, we've now got Schumacher and Lawson in our sights here. Is Schumacher going to have a look at Lawson or is Schumacher going to be vulnerable to us? I think it's going to be the latter. Schumacher not really close enough to have a look at Lawson. He gets there, but he runs out of straight and that's going to leave him vulnerable to us. We're going to take the dive down the inside of this right-hander. And that is P16. We've got past Mick Schumacher. Next up is Liam Lawson in 15. And I'm hoping our teammate will not make this difficult for us. I'm hoping he sees us coming and it's just like, you know what? You're the boss. You're you the man. Go past. That is such cringy commentary. I do apologise. But, oh, we've got a yellow flag. Why have we got a yellow flag? I think that might be Ricardo blowing up. It's an orange car on the map, so I assume that is going to be the McLaren slowing down. And yes, it is. It's Daniel Ricardo coming to a halt. That engine has had enough. And bang, it goes, leaving a trail of smoke and oil behind him. But now we're going to do our favourite overtake on Liam Lawson, who gets out of our way. One thing I still want to see for my team is a teammate out the way button. Right, I want to see team orders be put into the game. Like, that's a suggestion for F123. Team orders. Make it happen. Okay, anyway, the safety, the safety car, car is out again. I presume that's for Ricardo, but if it is, that's a very late call for the safety car. And if I'm honest, I'm a little bit frustrated that that safety car was called because... As you can see, without that safety car, the AI that pitted would have been a few seconds behind us. So we would have had a bit of breathing space. But whatever, it's moved us. Our strategy has moved us up to fourth. And I'm going to try and get to the end of this race. But my goodness me, my tyres are going to be absolutely cooked by the end of it. Right. Leading the race is Lando Norris, followed by George Russell, Perez and myself. But I believe that Norris and Russell are still on the medium tyres, so they are going to have to pit. And I don't know why they stayed out until after the safety car and then pitted, because they have just ruined their races. So, Ferrari, clearly Ferrari strategists working for their team there. Right, Verstappen is very slow out of the last corner, and that allows Charles Leclerc down the inside. Leclerc getting that move done, but Verstappen now coming back round the outside. Verstappen's got better momentum around the outside there. And Max has taken Leclerc back. Max Verstappen just being like, you're not having that place off me, sunshine. But now here comes Charles Leclerc nearly losing it there. Sweeps around the outside. And Charles Leclerc says, actually, I am having that place. Thank you very much. Off I go. And while all this is going on, I've got the attention of Lewis Hamilton right behind me, who's trying to take P2 from me. And I am going to fight this as hard as I can, but Hamilton's gone through, but I'm going to have the inside line and break later. And Hamilton <laughs> losing the place again. So we've managed to hold on to P2 there. Lewis getting passed on the straight, but we still had the inside line. 
and Lewis not quite getting it done yet. Right, next time round, Lewis is going for the inside. I've given him the space down the inside if he so chooses to take it. But we've just got better momentum on the line we're on, and I give him a little bit of a squeeze, and that is still P2, so we're still holding on. And this is going to be a long race to withstand the pressure. Lewis not quite alongside there, so I felt comfortable taking the racing line. And in fact, that's backed him up into Leclerc. And I think Leclerc has taken P3 from him. So Charles Leclerc in that Ferrari moving up to third. And if I'm honest, I'm more worried having him behind me because that Ferrari is OP. And just look at how many cars are right behind me here. This is going to be a long race of soaking up this pressure. Right, Hamilton and Leclerc are side by side with each other, and Leclerc's now coming down the inside. I mean, we do make a little bit of contact. It's given my undertray a bit of a nudge. Leclerc on the outside, I'm on the inside, side by side through the, the end of that sector, but we've managed to hold on to the position. Leclerc getting quite determined to get through, and we are just holding our nerve at the moment. It's going to be a long 12 laps, though, that we have to hold it. But I'm going to do my very best. Right, coming to the left-hander here. And I think we've had a nudge. I think we've had a nudge. Let's have a look. Did Leclerc nudge us there? Yes, he did. Leclerc just outbreaking himself and misunderstanding, not reading where I was going to be. And he's given himself front wing damage. Unbelievable. So Leclerc breaking a little late, giving himself front wing damage. And Lewis Hamilton does the same. So both drivers now having to pit, both doing it one lap after the other, and now we've got Fernando Alonso having a go. He's turning in on me here. Excuse me, Fernando, I had the inside line there. What are you doing? But Lewis Hamilton and Charles Leclerc just misreading that entirely and going into me. Right, we've now made a mistake, and that's going to allow Alonso a look, but Alonso getting caught out by trying not to hit me and that's allowed Max Verstappen onto him you see there Alonso just backing out as I get it sideways Verstappen going around the outside there that's a brave overtake if ever I saw one you don't really want to be trying it around the outside there and now these two are side by side Alonso and Verstappen side by side coming up to the last corner this is such exciting wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing here at Singapore. You don't normally see this round here. Look at Lance Stroll on the left of Sainz trying to take advantage. Sainz backed up by the lot of it. Stroll sticking in a front wing down the inside, wanting to make positions here. And I told you Lance Stroll was looking strong in this race. Alonso gets ahead of Verstappen. And for all that, I think Verstappen took damage and pitted. And speaking of taking damage, Sainz has gone into Alonso. And Stroll just sees the pair of them off. It looked like Alonso ran wide. And Sainz just got caught out while he was on the outside trying to get past him. There you go. There's the contact. So both Ferraris taking damage in this race. Right. Alonso now trying to get back past Stroll. And Stroll's now going around the outside. And you know what? I'm all for this because this just gives me a moment to breathe. Somehow I'm holding my position while the AI are just losing their minds. But of course I will encourage them losing their minds because that helps me keep position right. Alonso going very defensive on Stroll. Stroll's going to now go around the outside there. He's going to have the inside line for the next corner but I feel like Alonso will have the momentum on the exit. And Alonso also having the inside line. We're on board with Joe Guan Yu now, who is running in an incredible fifth place. Stroll just getting ahead, but he's gone wide and nearly lost the car there. And that's going to allow Alonso around the outside. Alonso getting the place done. Now Joe Guan Yu having a look at Stroll. He's going to break late. And does he make contact with the Alpine? I think he does. I wasn't sure at first who made the contact. Right on board with Gotifi, who is way into the point. And it was Joe Guan Yu who he right on board with then. He's done exactly what Leclerc and Hamilton did with me. Just got caught out misreading it and making contact. And that is gutting for Joe Guan Yu. But if I were him, I would have stayed out with minor damage at that point. 
because he was running in such a high position. So, why he pitted there and lost all that time, I don't know. Meanwhile, we've got Liam Lawson here fighting Alex Albon for a position in the points. And Lawson, is he going to see Albon off? Albon's having a look at coming back. They're going to go side by side. But Lawson round the outside saying, not in your life, mate. I'm keeping this position. This is a chance for our teammate as well to grab points. And now we're on the last lap. Like I said, the AI just seem to have lost their minds in this race. But that allowed me to hold P2. But Alonso has broken free. And my tyres are so dead. I've gone to the cover Alonso. But Alonso is now down the inside. I'm going to try and keep momentum around the outside. But the grip I had earlier just does not exist. Down the inside then. And because of the inside line, we hold the position. But I just do not have the grip left anymore. These tyres are absolutely finished. So are we going to be able to hold Alonso around this final lap? Look how close he's getting. This is going to be challenging. Is Alonso going to make the Leclerc and Hamilton mistake? I wonder. No, he stays back. And I've heard my turbocharger is on its last legs. Do not fail me now. Right on the straight. Alonso's having a go down the inside. I'm going to try and go around the outside. But unfortunately, it's a mistake for us. And into the wall we go. And Alonso, right at the end, stealing P2 from us. That is unfortunate. We make another mistake there, but you know what? We've got a bit of a gap to stroll. And George Russell, who initially looked like he'd messed up his own race by pitting so late, because of all the chaos, is in P5. But for us, it's a first podium of this career mode come on yes red ball pulling out all the stops today what a great win so natalie what do you think helped them deliver this result well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we can talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those that we've witnessed today. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the front position today, and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win. Well, what more do you want from a race, really? It had Let's twists, it had turns, it had now random safety cars. And in the end, so we picked up a podium position I have to give in P3, starting in 13th as well. We made the most of that strategy, but we also made like the most of the fact, like, like I said, so the AI just it. lost their minds. The First, we had it Leclerc go into us, then Lewis did it, so... AI mistakes, very much a thing in this game. They just seem to misread my braking spot and try to go for a half-hearted lunge and outbreak themselves into me. But And then the AI were busy going into each other. So it was just mayhem all the way through the field. Verstappen lost a wing on another AI. Sainz lost a bit of wing on another AI. Zhou Guan Yu lost a bit of wing on another AI. It was just chaos, and through all the chaos, that allowed us to retain P3, a great podium position. I'm gutted that we did bottle P2 right at the end. We could have had a better podium result, but I just didn't have the tyres to fight Alonso there. And I didn't have the grip to fight him round the outside, and that's how we ended up in the wall and letting him go. 
But still, P3. I really didn't expect that. That's an absolutely amazing result for my team. And for myself, of course. And Liam Lawson making it into the points as well. So it's a double celebration for the team. As Liam Lawson scores his first Formula 1 points. And you can see that moves us up into P10 in the Drivers' Championship. And further solidifies P8 in the Constructors' Championship. Also worthy of a mention is Gotifi finishing up in the top six. Well, thank you for watching this race. Don't forget to leave a like. Hit the subscribe button if you're new and you want to see more content from me. Until the next time, that was mental. TTFN, guys. That's all for now.